five ways to save your house. I want you to save your home. I can help you. Here's some easy ways. Let's go through them and get right into it. Number one. Number one is all about the value of your home. You've got to keep the value low. Keep it low, get it low, get the valuers to make sure that the market is in a low point, that you've got lots of obstacles around and therefore your house is not worth as much as maybe the house next door or the house behind you. It's all about keep the value low. Number two, number two, what is wrong with your house? Now, you're going, what is she talking about? What is wrong with your home? Get in someone to go through all the things. I had no idea that I had termites in my house. I had no idea that the veranda was rotting away. All of those things affect the value of your home. And that's what it comes down to. Keep the value low, number one and number two. Number three, the third way you can keep your home. It's all about contributions. Contributions is the legal term associated with what did you put into the house? What did you put into your marriage? I'm gonna give you an example of how this relates to keeping your house. So in my very messy divorce, and I did go through a very messy one for years, my family home was actually a family home. So what I mean by that is my brother put money in, my mother put money in, I put money in, I sold a house that I had. All of those contributions made out that basically I had more of a right, more of an entitlement to this house, to my home, than my ex did. So have a think about your contributions and have a look on my website and there should be a page there that can help you out with that. So number four, number four is also a legal term and it's to do with future need. So what is your future need? Do you have little children? Are you maybe disabled and you cannot go back to the workforce? There are all kinds of things that you need to think about that what makes up your future need and therefore that again comes back to keeping your house. If you've got more of a future need, you can put more of a case together, whether you're in settlement, whether you're in mediation, whether you're going to court, you can put all of this together in terms of keeping the roof over your head. So that's number four. Now number five, we want you to keep your house. I want you to keep your house. Number five is all about, can you afford to buy your ex out? These are the calculations you need to have a look at. You need to have a look at do you have any cash that you can buy him out with? What cash will be coming in? Do you have any superannuation or pension that you could use? Another one is side hustles. If you get a mortgage, you need to show income. You can buy your ex out as long as you have a mortgage. Have a look at my website for the side hustles. The spreadsheet there that you can use all about side hustles. Now in my messy divorce, I at one stage had four four students, four tenants, living with my family, myself and my kids, going through a messy, messy divorce, all to help out with putting food on the table and to be able to buy him out. So that's really important of working out your calculations. Can you buy him out? How would you do it? How would you make it work? Because I want you to save your home. It's a really important thing, especially for a woman going through a divorce. The statistics show that you are very unlikely to get back into a home, a roof over your head after the divorce. Unfortunately, I have to say it, it's a really sad statistic, but you have less chance. So it's much better to fight for what's yours, to use side hustles, to work out how you can save your home, the one that you have now. Now I'd like to see you on the other side. Let's join me in the video called Side Hustles. Join me in the video called Fight for What's Yours and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Talk to you soon. I'm Lisa Dixon, Divorce TV. See you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.